A note to those of you that might be coming here before you've gone through the bash tutorial, this will seem a little bit technical, maybe a lot bit technical. Don't worry about that. Just see what I'm doing, see that see how I'm copying and pasting stuff in to get the installation done and follow along with that. And then for the rest of you, there's going to be a little bit more explanation as to how ZSH is cool, um, especially if you're a developer. ZSH is better than Bash in the same way that Vim is better than VI. There's a couple of features that are just a little more intuitive, especially for beginners. It's a lot easier to be starting out with ZSH. So I'm going to go here to dash, start typing in terminal. It pops up. I could click on it. I'm just going to hit enter. That'll open it because it's the first in the list. And now terminal here is the uh, the, the thing that I can move around, the thing that has uh, these different menus in it. Um, but what's actually running inside here with the blinking cursor that I'm typing at, that's actually bash. So terminal is kind of the, the graphical user interface part and bash is the part that's actually um, doing the work. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to use the Python programming language, I could type in Python and then I would be at a Python shell. And Python's still in terminal, but terminal isn't Python. Same thing, terminal isn't bash, but bash is the, um, the shell that I'm interacting with in terminal. The first thing that I need to do is install um, a few things. So I'm going to put a dash Y to let it know not to ask me if I want to continue to download so many megabytes or any further questions that aren't related to a problem. And then I want to get curl, vim, git, and zsh. I want curl because that's how I'm going to be um, downloading the zsh installer. Vim because I want to be able to edit the configuration files and Ubuntu comes with VI by default which isn't as nice as Vim as I said previously. Uh, Git is a repository, um, a source code management tool and that is the, the installation for ZSH is in a Git repository. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my password. You won't see the letters appear on the screen, but I did type it. I hit enter. It was correct. If it wasn't, it would have asked me again. And it's going to begin downloading and installing. Now that that's finished, I'll open up Firefox. And I will search for oh my ZSH because that is actually a package that has a lot of um, configuration already done. Because ZSH on, it, on its own, um, without any configuration is not too much more interesting than Bash. But oh my ZSH is a collection of plugins and tools and, and whatnot that just make it really simple and easy to get set up and then you can go back and tweak it and customize it later. A lot of people, once they get into customizing ZSH, um, abandon oh my ZSH. And they just do it from the ground up. Now. Uh, one thing to note, anytime you're copying and pasting script commands from a website, there's the potential that that person's website is trying to cause you harm. Um, so don't install things from, from places you don't trust, but don't be too afraid either because most of the time people who are writing tutorials are trying to help you. Um, let's see if I can grab the edge of this here. It's one thing about Ubuntu I wish they would fix is that that corner grabber is a little tough. So I'll go ahead and paste this in, and I I happen to know that they're expecting. So there's a there's a shell called sh, which everybody kind of assumes that sh is is aliased to bash, but on Ubuntu it isn't. Um, it's aliased to a shell called dash, which doesn't work quite the same and so I'm actually gonna replace the sh with bash just because I know because I've run the script before that it's actually expecting bash so bash isn't shells aren't really a programming language per se they're not like Python or Ruby or JavaScript but the the different shell languages 
are a little bit different, and most scripts are designed to be run in Bash. And most of the tutorials you see are designed for Bash. So if you were to write a script that was just for ZSH, it wouldn't run in Bash. But most people don't write scripts for ZSH, they write them for Bash. Alright, now there's one part of this that still failed, and I don't know why, but it was the part where it actually changes the shell from being Bash by default to being ZSH by default. So I'm going to go ahead and run the command that will fix that. So what this is doing here is saying change the shell to wherever ZSH is located for whichever user this is. So um, which ZSH is user bin ZSH, who am I, whoops, who am I is cool age 86 if I them Etsy password which is abbreviated as passwd I can see right here that it did in fact change my shell from where whereas it would have been before either ben sh or user ben bash now it's user ben zsh in order for this change to take effect I just need to log out and log back in so I'll click log out and log back in. And now I'll go ahead and open up terminal again. And now you can see that it's different. Now it's running ZSH with a theme that's colorized. So all the commands are still the same, still do uh, ls and uh, push d. And um, actually, one of the neat things about ZSH is that I don't have to type push d in order for that to, to work. So if I just type pop d, I go back to the directory I was before. Now if I just type downloads and hit enter, it actually knows that what I wanted was to push that directory and then I can pop D and it pops me back out so it does push D automatically when you just put in a directory name um, that's a nice little shortcut also uh, when I hit tab whereas bash would give me just a list of files if I hit tab again ZSH allows me to cycle through the list that's pretty nifty um, Likewise, if I misspell a file name, like let's say for example, I type desktop instead of desktop, ZSH will look at it and say, uh, it looks like you misspelled that. Did you want to correct it? And I could say yes. I don't actually have anything on my desktop, but um, if I did, you'd see it. So another bit, uh, this, this can be kind of annoying in a sense, because let's say, there's a lot of times where maybe you just create a file and you call one file one and then you call the other file two and then ZSH will ask you did you mean file one so you just because it asks you if you misspelled something doesn't mean you necessarily did uh, but in a lot of cases it can help you with that you know avoiding typos is what I mean um, another thing is that if I if I type something with the wrong case, so I'm misspelling this by using a lowercase d instead of an uppercase d, if I hit tab, it'll automatically correct it. So with bash, I have to start with the first letter of whatever file or folder I'm looking at before I hit tab and it will fill it out. With zsh, I can actually start in the middle. So if you know you've got a folder that has a particular, or file that has a particular word in the middle of it, but you don't remember offhand what it begins with, you can just hit tab, and it'll actually, uh, if it's unique enough, it'll fill it out even if the word is in the middle. So there's a lot of really cool stuff about ZSH. Um, another one is that comes with oh my ZSH in particular, that configuration setup, is the themes. So in my home folder, I've got all my ZSH and themes and there's quite a list there 
and you can go on to the um, oh my zsh wiki so i'm just going to google oh my zsh and themes and then it's the first one that comes up here you can get a preview of what all the different themes look like um, right on this page one thing that you might also like to do is from your home directory open up .zshrc and you can change the zsh theme to random as it says in that comment right above here Boop. and now if I close out of terminal when I open terminal again and zsh loads it'll load with a random theme and so it shows what the name of the theme is so you can do that and kind of get a feel for which color scheme you like best or how it interacts. Now I happen to know that one theme that I really like is in the loop so I'm gonna change the theme name to in the loop and then close out and open this back up again and now I'll show you some of the other powerful features of the ZSH setup with um, oh my ZSH. So let's say I'm going to make a directory, a, a Git repository. So I'll do example project. So I made that directory, I cd into it, excuse me. And then I'm going to do git init and I'm going to touch readme.md so that just created this empty file. I'll just put in here hello world and um, let me explain what I was doing a little bit so for those of you that aren't as familiar with them I hit I to go into insert mode now I'm hitting colon WQ to write and quit that's to save and quit um, now I'm going to do git add readme and you can see that when the project directory was clean there was no symbol uh, over here but now that it's dirty there's a symbol there so if I do git status I can see that there are changes to be committed that's considered dirty if I commit that change so I've added the file and I do git commit and I'll just give it uh, a message added readme I'm gonna ignore this for now I don't have git set up yet but now you can see that the little marker went away, the little lightning bolt icon. And a lot of the themes have something like this, where they'll tell you whether or not um, your work is completely saved or not. So likewise, I'll create another branch. I'll call it foo, and I'll do git checkout foo. And now you can see that it switched me from, from master to foo. So whenever I'm in, um, ZSH let me let me just go back home okay you can see that goes away and then I'll go back or I guess I can just type it out example project so I go back into example project and now I can see I'm back on foo again so it's very good for when you're doing development as well as just general usage for the casual terminal user and there are many, many, many more features of ZSH that I'm not familiar with. There's a lot of things that I just kind of bump into as I'm using it. I see that it makes some suggestions for me. Um, one of those is actually if you do RM star, it will ask you if you're sure that that's what you meant to do, which I think is kind of a nice feature. It protects you from maybe accidentally uh, hitting star when you're RMing something and perhaps you meant to hit uh, capital I and you accidentally hit the capital eight which is the star so I know a lot of this information has been very technical and I did want to you know touch on the level of of a person who uses terminal often but I want to assure you as a beginner uh, someone who's not familiar with terminal ZSH is going to be um, is going to be easier for you to get along with it's going to help you to learn how to use terminal better by asking you questions when there's typos and such. It'll lead to a more enjoyable experience, get rid of some of the frustrations. So um, 
Again, you have the instructions here in my notes on how to install it if you weren't able to see it clearly in the video. And I hope that you enjoy ZSH and enjoy using Terminal and, and um, having a more productive computer experience.